um, uh, rallying uh, goes to the very heart of CSMA and as a consequence I think it's extremely important for Frizzell uh, to, to support that. Um, what we are looking for out of it is, well, first of all, I'm looking for all the cars to come through safely um, and all the drivers and, uh, and co-drivers to come through safely. Um, if they could win the team event, that would be wonderful. Um, without doing, without having the backup of the team, we just couldn't even consider doing the event, the logistical support, and uh, just really taking all the nightmares out of everything, booking hotels, sorting out what vehicles are going to be where. What, what uh, tickled me most was I used to be jealous of the works crews coming out of, out of a stage and you'd have Toyota and Lancia there with tables with picnic bars and cups of tea for the drivers. I was always jealous of that, but we've had that treatment this year, so it's been really deluxe for us. Uh, well, basically, if it wasn't for the uh, for the team, and we're getting in the team, I wouldn't be doing it. To seriously do the RAC, it's no use like just thinking, right, we'll do the RAC and just hope everything lasts, because it won't. And it, anybody who does the RAC and thinks they're going to scrimp and scrape and get round is uh, comedians because mm. I've tried it once before. <laughs> uh, when you say do I enjoy motorsport, I enjoy coming to this event. To be honest I don't know one end of a car from the other. Uh, however this is rather special because of our involvement. Uh, I'm particularly pleased uh, and admire the, the the sheer dedication of the of the support teams and the way uh, they get so heavily involved. So far today we've had no problems with the normal preambles of uh, scrutineering that all went relatively well apart from an inordinate long wait for the scrutineer while he's having his lunch. We've, we've had the best preparation for the event that we possibly could have done with the resources and time that were available. Um. How are you prepared as a coach driver for the eventuality of all hell breaking loose in weather stakes? Well, I know we're going to win the snowball fight. <laughs> right, well, he's obviously better at snowball fights than I am. He can be outside the car. I'll be driving the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> no problem with noise. Um, put the, um, the noise down to 100 decibels. <clears throat> so, we was caught out there, really. And a lot of people were, even the works cars. Uh, so it was a problem. We just went and got a bit of a modification um, to make it sound a bit quieter. But so uh, we miscalculated how long scrutineering were going to last. So we got there about quarter to five, which, you know, normally if, if they're going to scrutinize 200 cars, it usually takes them about three days. <laughs> yeah, we got there and they'd all gone home. So we had to dash up to the hotel um, HQ and sort it out there and was a bit touch and go actually. Then Mr. Gullard, Mr. Goddard was uh, shooting up there and trying, panicking a bit. But we'd, I'd actually sorted it myself by then because Alan had gone to um, check Tatton Park out. Uh, well the formalities were fine, scooting here itself. Uh, the actual mechanical checking of the car was fine, the weighing, etc. But uh, quite a few of us had quite a few things to say about the noise test as we were held in a rather confined area. And I think the noise readings were somewhat um, uh, somewhat astray. I believe Colin drove her on a few occasions. Colin McRae, that is. Um, certainly he drove the sister car, D888 CBC. But this was primarily Louise's car. Um, she did the RAC in 87, that's probably his most memorable outing. Whereas along 10th overall, until unfortunately uh, the radio, the oil cooler was shattered. And being a woman, she couldn't fix it. I must admit, Tatton Park does seem a very onerous task right now. But uh, well, we won't do anything silly. Just drive through there at a nice sensible rate, then we'll carry on from there.
dry and mostly sunny today. Won't be as cold as recent days either. Winds are lighter and temperatures should reach seven big degrees tonight. Leaked reports from Princess Diana's TV interview claim she doesn't want to divorce Prince Charles. She also reportedly says she isn't out to destroy the monarchy or leave Britain. It comes on the east, some rain in the south and west. Classic FM. It's four minutes past seven. Hallelujah! The Sunday stages are quite good fun because there's so many people out there watching and uh, it's nice to show off a bit. You know, in Chatsworth and I quite like Donington because I live like four miles from Donington and I know it very well. So you can have, you can have some good fun going around there. This one with Car 67, Steve and uh, Alan. Quick word with Alan, all ready for the off? Yeah, I walked this one last night so we're quite confident. One got Phil this time. Phil, all ready for the off? Yeah, no problems. My notes are ready. Good notes for this stage. Well, we know it's pretty slippy out there. Uh, it's fine at the moment. Praying for no more rain? No, this will do. If it dries up, this will be better. Right, well, best of luck then. And Rui Madeira leads Group N in 10th place overall. That is after two stages. Hey. Rally. Hiya, yeah, start SS1 with car 182, man himself, Mr Waitman and Mr Saunders over there being very quiet. How are you uh, feeling now starting the start line of your first RAC? Well, this is going to be the worst stage of my whole life, I think. I'll be so pleased to make it to the end.
10 to 8 and here is Tina. Icy roads and fog almost everywhere today, so take care if you're on the road. No one news beats. Beatlemania begins all over again and pull up the armchair for Diana on the telly. In sport, a draw is on the cards in the first test in South Africa. The first Beatles single for 25 years hits the airwaves today. Right, we're in uh, service, kill the service now with Steve Green, driver car 67. Just finished Ponder Shaw. It's got to be the obvious question. How was it? The soup's nice, is it? I don't get him. Hey, stop the camera. I don't get his soup. <laughs> oh, then, how's the soup? The, the stage was very nice. The first, like, 27 mile was uh, really nice. But the last 10 mile was really, really shady and loose. It was like a bomb site, and there were cars off everywhere. Uh, we got overtaken by them two Russians in the Astra, and then they went and rolled in front of us, which was quite interesting. So the cars held together OK here in service? Yeah, I'm pleased to get through that, that particular stage, because uh, I have spent a lot of time in there, like hours, <laughs> standing around waiting for someone to drag the car out. But, uh, yeah, I'm pleased with the way things are going. Uh, the first time we've seen you for two days now. How was uh, yesterday? Any problems? No, it was the gearbox. We've had to change the gearbox. Um, just very noisy. We don't know why, but I don't think the lads have had a chance to change it yet. And the new one's OK? The new one's lovely. So we're off from here down over towards Grisdale. Any thoughts on that? Grizzly Grisdale. It's nice over there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'll be glad when we get out down back to Chester, actually. Great. Wales. <laughs> So that's it, you've got Wales to come now then. You uh, prefer that end of the country? Yeah, Wales is um, it's a bit more forgiving than here. You go off here and there's some right ditches. Uh, in Wales, it, you, there's not so many big whacking ditches that you can fall in. You just go off a bit. You can, you can like, go off six foot and you've still got a bit of room here. It's tippy-toe, tippy-toe all the time. Great. I'll let you get on with your soup then. Thanks a lot, Steve. Thank you. All the best. Kill the service again this time with car 141, Graham Preswell. Finished Thunder Show. What do you think? Yes, uh, we finished it, but we had a bit of a fright early on in the stage when we found a, a large rock had been placed in the middle of the track in front of us, and I uh, tried to scoot around the outside of it, but clouted it with an inside front wheel. And that must admit put me off for a few uh, few miles, but um, after that we had only one other incident, which is when uh, Phil managed to uh, late call one of the notes a big bend over a crest and um, <laughs> we got around him. <laughs> so on that first point, the boys are busy working on the car now, changing brakes and tyres. Any of this as a result of the impact or is it just general maintenance? No, general maintenance. I think we managed to get away with the uh, the rock. I think looking at it, we must have given it a glancing blow and uh, we got away without puncture or, or wheel damage at all. But the pads are just a pads change uh, because they're, they're getting a bit deeper after 37 miles of um, pumping them hard. <laughs> And uh, you see Phil's with his with his notes. Uh, how late in the stage was that? Was that the concentration going or just a problem? No, it was mid-stage, I think. But it was interesting, in the stage, there was probably half a dozen cars off in the last two miles. So I think we were beginning to get to people. <laughs> yes, we had Stephen earlier. Uh, no damage, but going well. Yourself, uh, how do you feel you are going at the moment? Yeah, we're, we're not going too badly. I think we've still not yet found the limit yet. I think we're, we're, we're pushing along, but... I've been out of the saddle a while, so it's just taking me a bit of time to get back into it. But we got through there, we did 37 miles in 40 minutes, so that's pretty close to a 60 mile an hour average, so that'll, that'll do me. Right, we're at the service at Kilda, end of Pondershaw, car 182, Alan Waitman. Well, it's all over, how was it? Hell, absolute hell. It was rough, it was muddy, there are cars off all over the place. Unfortunately, there aren't enough cars in there at present to stop us going off on the corners. But uh, I don't want to do that again in a hurry. That was a mess in there. Do you have any mechanical problems while you're in there? No, no, we were taking it so easy through there, we weren't going to break anything. The main thing we wanted to avoid was a puncture. Colin got a puncture in there, uh, suffered all sorts of time problems. We weren't going to do the same. We're going to save the quick stuff for later. Well, we've uh, got Pundershot out of the way now. Is that uh, another mental hurdle over for the RAC? 
Well, I thought it was going to be, but then, of course, we've got 23 miles in Kershaw later, so there's quite a few more. I'm only part of the way through day two, so no heroics as yet. We've been taking uh, time out of the Middlesex people, so that's one good thing. And the boy's busily working on your car now. Anything serious or just a spanner check? No, no, just minor things right now. We had a bit of an oversteer problem yesterday, but that's now fixed. Played around with the tyre pressures. Uh, we lost a nut off the exhaust manifolds, but minor stuff. So. Speaking of yesterday, we didn't catch up with you for a talk yesterday. Any, any problems on your first day? Well, the car kept on leaping sideways. Uh, horrendous oversteering moments. OK, I know MSs don't really work on a race circuit, but even on the loose, they were jump it was jumping sideways as well. But, well, we the first time we've driven on the Michelins, we haven't had any experience with them before. Now we've got to know them, they're fine. Again, as you say, there's a mental hurdle with Thundershaw. It's the long one, if you like. When you're actually in there, was there a stage when you thought, good grief, we haven't finished yet, we've got a long way to go? Well, I started grunting and groaning, about, and Martin said, we're halfway through. This is, and that was when the car kept on just trying to disappear off the road. I was getting the car stuck in the tracks, but then the tracks seemed to disappear off the road and not stick to it, which is a little surprising. Then, a little further on, you could see why they went off the road, because there was somebody stuck in the ditch. So we were just getting dragged in as well. So there are a lot of people off in there, aren't there? A lot of people. Cozzies, Suzuki's, everywhere. They're going off forwards, backwards, sideways, all sorts. So finally, the team, you and Martin, it's your first RAC, as we mentioned before, first time out together. Are you getting on OK in the car? We are gelling. We are gelling, indeed. Yeah. So that blood trickling out of Martin's nose wasn't your fault, was it? <laughs> Compared to his normal uh, drivers, I must be dead easy. Maybe too easy. <laughs> well, all the best for the rest of the day and the rest of the event. Thank you much, Lee. We'll be there at the end, we hope. seconds after the 12th special stage of the Network Q RAC Rally. Information for the nation. The, certainly the, the run through Kielder is always difficult. Whatever, whatever uh, the weather or whatever the, uh, the conditions, it's a difficult place to drive in. The surfaces are always uh, slimy. There's always uh, lots of ditches to catch you out. You haven't got to go very far off the road to get yourself into problems. So that's the place to be careful. Uh, but I think Wales this year looks to be, uh, the, the, the uh, Tuesday looks to be a nice day. Millions watched last night's panorama as she told Martin Bashir about her affair with Army Officer James Hewitt. The rally is heading for Wales this morning and the sense of anticipation couldn't be any greater. Colin McRae had his fair share of problems yesterday, but the Scotsman responded in exceptional style. <laughs>
second of the three management vehicles. Chris, a uh, quick overview really of what the second of the three, or maybe all three management vehicles, their purpose in this year's event, please. Well, the three management vehicles will be uh, travelling about and visiting the, uh, the major service areas to provide um, food and refreshments for the three competing cars and their, their backup crews, uh, the chase cars and the, uh, the service vans. Uh, obviously, uh, We'll be uh, taking it in turns to visit the service area so we don't all turn up at the same service area. Um, and also we have an additional function that if uh, anything breaks on the cars uh, and the spare part isn't actually carried in the service van or the chase car, then uh, the management vehicle will be detailed to go off to, uh, to whoever to purchase the parts, um, which will leave the chase car um, to, uh, to continue its function. Um, um, it is, has happened in the past that um, certain parts are broken on the car. You can't carry absolutely every, every part that goes on a car in a service van. And, and it, it does happen that uh, a bit that's never ever broken before does break. And, and that's one of the management crew's function is to go off and buy the part and bring it back to the service crew with the, the chase car to fit. I've just spoken to uh, Rob Dyson, Matthew Clark's co-driver. Sounds like Alan's uh, parked up in Pamperthog, so we might not find him. Uh, Graham should still be due soon, but uh, evidently Alan's parked up, so we get to find out what's, happen what's happening. Uh, no news on him, so we will wait. Right, car 141, Graham. Well, up to now, how's it gone? All right, but there's a load of smoke coming out of the back of my car, I think, isn't it? Very cold, it's probably just stick. Oh, it's OK. <laughs> Had me worried for a minute when I saw it drifting over your right shoulder there. <laughs> how's it going? Not too bad this morning, yeah, we've... Uh... Uh, had a relatively uh, clean run through the two stages, a bit slow in Pamperthal, but had a good time through the last one. So. You were saying you had fun running back from Fundershaw the day before? Yeah, we got punctures, broken engine mountings, broken drive shaft, you name it, we had it on that day, so it wasn't an easy run back to Chester on Monday night. To finish off, have you seen Steve in the last stage? He's behind who three or four st uh, places, he's had a fuel pump problem. Great, thanks a lot, good luck. Bye. Fuel pumps, fuel pumps uh, pipe came off inside the tank, we had to take the tank out, took the tank out to put it back on. You're still going though, yeah? Yeah, but I think we're like really low on oil for some reason. Right. I don't know what the fuck Good luck, sir. What's happened? There we go. Is there any oil around here? Yeah. Oil.
back start, Garth Einjog. Car 182, Alan, how's it going? It's fine so far, we're taking it very easily now. Um, we're, we're nice and placed on the road, the guy behind isn't catching us, we're not catching the guy in front. Um, I hear Steve had a few problems on the uh, the first stage of the day, so we're going to make sure we're there at the end. No no risks at all. And we missed you yesterday, any problems yesterday on the way down from uh, Kielder? We do, well, we uh, rearrange the front suspension a little bit on the first stage of the day, but the boys fix that in no time at all. Then there was just a little bit of tiredness hitting me. We lost the intercom on one stage as well. But again, minor little things, so we're still running okay. Great, thanks very much. No problem.